Hello, my name is Adam Singer and I'm a diagnostic radiologist from Atlanta, Georgia, and today I'll be discussing MR anatomy of nerves in the arm. Quick reminder of this video and all the videos on my channel are for educational purposes only and should not be used to make medical decisions. If you're on Twitter, don't forget to follow me. This is my handle down here. So on this first image here, we're looking on the T1 weighted without fat sat uh, image um, at the lateral interbrachiocutaneous nerve, and I point this out and blow it up just to show you the appearance of the nerve when it's normal. We see uniform thickness of these little dots, these hypo-intense dots. These are the nerve fascicles surrounded by um, hyper-intense connective tissue. So that's a normal appearance. They should be uniform in caliber. They should slowly taper as they go distally here. So here is the normal appearance likened to a cluster of grapes in cross-section of a nerve uh, on high-resolution MRI. So when we do our MRI images to look at nerves, we do uh, MRI neurography um, and the definition of this really isn't agreed upon uniformly, but um, there are three sequences that we make use of when we're talking about MR neurography in the extremity, so not in the plexus, but in the actual limbs. Um, the first is the one that I just showed, the axial T1 without fat sat, 1.5 millimeter slice thickness. We also use an axial proton density fat sat, 1.5 millimeter, uh, millimeter slice thickness, and a coronal PSIF um, 3D image at 0.8. And uh, so we use this for looking at the fascicular architecture and for anatomy, looking for scar tissue around the nerve. Um, we use this to look for the signal in the nerve. So normally, healthy nerves should be iso-intense to slightly hyper-intense uh, with respect to muscle. It should not be iso-intense or hyper-intense to signal within vessels that are bright. So when you start seeing it bright like that, you want to think that there may be something going on. Um, and then the PSIF we use as a troubleshooting technique. So when it works, in the small vessels that look bright on the PD fat set, um, it will typically turn the signal uh, black, and so we can use that to troubleshoot and differentiate small nerve branches from small vessels. So here's an example, um, and we're looking at the T1 here, the PD fat set here, and the PSIF here, um, and we're looking at the bifurcation of the radial nerve here, and you can see what's gonna become the deep or posterior interosseous branch of the radial nerve and the superficial branch on the PD fat set, you can see it's slightly bright, um, but it's really not significantly brighter than muscle. Um, it's not as bright as vessels. It's not as bright as joint fluid. Um, and you can kind of make out the lateral and brachiocutaneous nerve over here as well. Um, you notice that there are these things over here, which are vessels. Um, these are not nerves here. And those turn black on the PSIF pulse sequence, as does the rest of the vessels here. So all these vessels are now black. And you can see the branches from the uh, radial nerve here. We're not really seeing the uh, smaller um, uh, lateral to brachiocutaneous nerve uh, in this case um, on the PSIF. This is a reconstruction, by the way, from our 3D coronal. So at another level, same area, um, you can see all the nerves here. I'm going to go through them in detail here, but here's the T1, just outlining them. The fat really helps to outline these nerves. Um, and uh, here's the PD fat set here, and you can see the uh, posterior interosseous nerve running between the heads of the supinator, and um, even though it's a little blurrier here, you can almost make out uh, something in here, but not as bright as vessels, so probably okay at that point. The superficial branch over here, um, you can see the median uh, nerve over here, the ulnar nerve here, lateral and brachial cutaneous nerve, um, and then we'll get through the medial and interbrachial cutaneous nerves in a bit. Um, and then here's your PSIF pulse sequence. And if you go back here, you see these bright structures here, and you may think these are nerves, um, and they're not really in the right location for nerves, but um, they are somewhat large as well. Um, and on the PSIF, they null out. So these are just vessels here that are nulling out, and again, leaving behind uh, the nerves that you can uh, see, um, not particularly uh, abnormal on these images here. So the major nerves that we see in the arm, uh, this is kind of a list of them. I would put them on your checklist when you're uh, doing MR, high resolution MR of, of the elbow, humerus, and forearm. Uh, the ulnar nerve, the median nerve, and the anterior interosseous nerve, which is a branch of the median nerve. The radial nerve with the two main branches, the posterior or deep uh, branches, the posterior interosseous. This is also called the pin or posterior interosseous nerve. The superficial branch of the radial nerve, which is sensory. The muscular cutaneous, which gives rise to the lateral antibrachial cutaneous nerve, and the medial antibrachial cutaneous nerve. So now I'm going to go through the anatomy here of these nerves. And um, this is the T1. It's great for the um, anatomy in part because you've got the fatty tissue around it for contrast. 
Um, but we have an, another way to contrast the nerves in this case. This is a patient who has neurofibromatosis, and so we have multiple uh, neurofibromas sort of diffusely infiltrating all the nerves here, um, which helps us to confirm that we're looking at nerves in this case and not at vessels here. So um, we'll begin uh, with the um, radial nerve here. So the radial nerve coming off the brachial plexus, off the posterior cord, along with the axillary nerve. Uh, it's going to come and wrap around the humerus and the spiral groove and come around the lateral side of the arm here. And so here you see it with the fascicles here. And just like the other nerves you're going to see, as we start scrolling through, you start seeing these little balls appearing here and effacing the normal fascicular architecture we talked about. And these are the neurofibromas here. And this is how you're going to confirm on this case that we are indeed looking at uh, nerves because you don't have neurofibromas in the vessels in this case. So we're going to follow us down to the elbow and you're going to see it split into two main branches. You've got this one going posteriorly. This is the posterior interosseous nerve or PIN or the deep branch. It's going to run past the arcade of froze, the tendinous edge of the supinator, and it's going to pass in between the superficial and deep heads of the supinator to exit into the dorsal forearm where it's going to innervate the muscles that are responsible for extension at the wrist and digits. So this is the posterior interosseous nerve here um, running into the dorsal forearm. We're going to follow this proximally here and it's going to meet back up with this which is the superficial branch of the radial nerve. So this is a sensory uh, nerve. You're going to see it coming through here and if we follow this all the way down, which we don't on this MRI, but all the way down to the level of the wrist and hand, you would see it come up through and exit into the subcutaneous tissues and it would be uh, near the uh, radial aspect of the thumb providing sensory innervation here. So we'll see how far, we, we catch it all the way down to here. So we'll follow that back just so you can again see it coming back and meeting up with the posterior interosseous nerve. So that is the radial nerve and its main branches. The next one we'll look at is the median nerve here and this is obviously not normal. Um, we see complete effacement. It's enlarged, but an effacement by these neurofibromas. Um, and as we scroll through, you see areas where the fascicles return and then more. So this is the median nerve here near the brachial artery, um, often underneath the uh, pronator teres. You see it coming down here and it gives rise to a branch called the anterior interosseous nerve, which innervates three muscles. Um, and when you have deficiency in the anterior interosseous nerve or lack of function, they talk about the Kylo Nevin syndrome you can't make the okay sign because of the muscles that are affected. This is typically pretty difficult to see, um, but you can see it coming off the median nerve here and it's gonna run down towards the interosseous membrane here. Um, and uh, so you have off the median nerve, the anterior interosseous nerve and off the radial nerve, the posterior interosseous nerve. So that's gonna be your median nerve here. We'll look at the ulnar nerve here. So this one arises from the medial cord of the plexus. Um, and uh, this one is going to be in the posterior medial aspect of the arm. You see all the scar tissue around it, and that's because the patient's had surgery over here. So they've had ulnar neuropathy in addition to the fact they have nerve fibromatosis. So really not um, normal fascicular architecture in this nerve at all. Um, very large, uh, and you see it sort of normalizing a little bit as you pass the cubital tunnel. So here in the cubital tunnel with all this post-surgical change here. So this is the ulnar nerve. Um, and then we talk about the musculocutaneous nerve, and that gives rise to a musculo portion. That's the innervation of two muscles, the biceps uh, brachii muscle and the brachialis underneath. And it's going to run um, from the uh, lateral cord of the brachial plexus, and it's going to innervate those muscles. It runs in between them, and then when it emerges past the lateral edge of the biceps, it becomes the lateral antibrachial cutaneous nerve, and this is a sensory nerve. Um, and you see it passing through here. And so you can see it's intimately associated with um, veins in several locations here. Um, so when you come back this way, um, and so you could imagine with um, vena puncture, depending on the location, this nerve has the potential for uh, injury here. Here you see it right underneath the vein here. Um, although it, it's been reported, it's probably not very common because they have vena puncture going on, um, you know, many, many times every day uh, across the world. So, but this is the nerve and this is why it potentially could be at risk uh, for needle sticks uh, with venipuncture. So the musculocutaneous nerve, and it's gonna, if we follow it all the way back, it would come back towards the medial side of the um, axle and arm like the other nerves coming off the plexus. And then finally, we'll see the medial uh, interbrachial cutaneous nerve. Um, and it has a volar and an ulnar branch. And we don't go all the way back to follow it from its origin here. 
Um, but if you uh, follow this proximally here, you see its association with the basilic vein. The basilic vein is going to split into several different components, a medial uh, cubital, medial uh, antebrachial, and then a uh, basilic of the forearm. Um, and so they're gonna be right near, those branches are right near the basilic branches. So here it is right here. And you can see the little neurofibromas in it confirming that this is um, nerve. And by location, this is gonna be uh, the volar branch of the um, medial antebrachial cutaneous nerve. And if we follow this proximally, you're gonna see this other branch coming towards it. So if we continued up the arm, you would see these come together. So this is gonna be your ulnar branch. And again, you see these little neurofibromas popping in and then the fascicular architecture sort of returning. It runs into um, some scar tissue here, but you can see it going there. So an ulnar and a volar branch of the um, medial antebrachial cutaneous nerve. All right, so that covers the major nerves uh, that you're gonna see at the level of the humerus, elbow, and forearm. Uh, I hope you like this video, and I hope it's helpful when you're seeing your cases and you're trying to see where these nerves are and determine if there's pathology. Um, I'm going to, at some point, show some cases of nerve pathology um, just to go along with this series, so those will be uh, coming up in the future. Um, if you like this video, please put a like or uh, comment down below, especially if you have any questions or other things you'd like covered. Um, and if you haven't subscribed already, don't forget to hit subscribe to the channel and the bell so you get notifications when new videos come up. As always, thank you so much for your support and your time, and I'll see you next time.